What's up everyone, and today I'm going to be showcasing version 2 of my ultimate Diluvian PvE build. This build is seriously insane, as I was able to easily beat wave 50 while taking very little damage at all. Fun fact, here's a time lapse of my health bar throughout the entire Diluvian, and as you can see it's barely moving at all. This is a high flame, high frost, dual attunement build, so we get a ton of HP from uncaps. While I am using a Grand Sudoraska this time around, and did lose a bit of M1 damage, I make up for that by one shot pretty much anything with Relentless Flames, as this mantra does over 5,000 damage, so that means pretty much anything in the way of it is going to die immediately. Plus, with Flora's Lava and the increased eruption damage, I am getting way more healing from Flame Wisp. Anyways, today we're going to go over how to make this build, how to use it to its fullest potential, and a few ways you can actually mid-max this build further, if you want to go beyond what even I I have done with the build, as this build has a ton of potential for min-maxing. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's hop over to the build maker. Alright, so for the race on this build, I decided to go with Capra, purely because I can use the healing mark on my teammates to heal them during difficult waves. Although technically you will get a little bit more damage out of Khan, but overall it doesn't really matter what race you go. For your Murmur, that's Ador, as well as your Oath is going to be Oathless, although you can go Dawnwalker if you want, but there isn't a lot of utility with it. Origin, I went Deep Bound for all the buffs it gives. Your outfit is going to be Ignition Deep Delver, and you're obviously going to use Seltorian Tide Knight when you get that. For your bell, I'm using a high DR Sacred Fields, so I can provide support. And for your starting elements, you just want to get 6 Flame Charm and 5 Frost Draw. Now in the starting screen, you're going to not want to invest any points, and try to get to 20 willpower as fast as possible. This is for Giant Slayer. Then jump all the way to 50 Fortitude for all your Fortitude talents. You go back to 30 Strength. This is so you can get Berserker. It provides you 20% damage when you knock a mob, which is huge. Then you go back to 50 willpower. That way you can get Underdog. Then you get 1 Charisma. And and I believe 4 heavy weapon, and you will have just hit power 9. And here you Shrine of Order, and these should be your stats. Now we go to 25 Charisma, then coming over to our element, we go 65 Frost Draw. You want to try to pick up something like Frozen Servants, so you can train on the divers, as 65 Frost Draw doesn't take long to get to. Now we'll jump to 70 Flame Charm. The best way to train Flame Charm is by using Fire God on mobs. It gives you absolutely insane training. Now we'll come back to 40 Willpower power for Azure Flames, then you want to go to 75 Frost Draw, 75 Flame Charm, uncap both of these, then go to 100 Flame Charm and 80 Frost Draw. Now for your final stats, you want to get 30 in the Heavy Weapon, and only 27 if you're a Khan, then get 26 Fortitude for an insane plus 1 HP, then get 5 Agility, and then you'll have 1 point spare at the end. You just put this in a Frost Draw for a little bit more damage, and do this with any extra spare points you might have. Now for your traits, I went with 6 Song Chant and 6 Vitality. My boons were Steadfast and Scrapper, my flaws being Simple and Glutton, since Glutton is very free. Now coming over to the talents, I went Flora's Lava for the insane damage it can provide, as well as Volcanic Glass, since this makes your Warden's Blades lethal. Then I went Carnivore, this is important for a secondary reason that I'll talk about later, as well as Wyvern Squad to make your mantras deal more damage after an upcut. Then I went Fish Fishman, as well as Exoskeleton into the finish. Fishman is free HP, Exoskeleton is free DR, and to the finish helps you when you're at low HP. Then I went Neuroplasticity for obvious reasons. Now Lose Your Mind is purely optional. If you decide to get a corrupt downside on something like Counter, it can be procced, although most of the time you're not procking it. Then get Thresher Claws for free pen, as well as Loot Skipper. Then I went Blood Iron Spirit and Scuba Drowner for HP. And that's it for your res. Coming down to the commons, we want time to go. On kill you'll get a free speed boost, which is super useful in this game mode. Now you can go flame within if you want, although your M1 damage isn't exceptional, but I'll pick it anyways. Now you want Grand Feast, this is pretty obvious, it's just better carnival. Then you want Giant Slayer for the free extra damage to larger foes, as well as Underdog and Tough Love. Then I got Heavy Hitter, just so I'd be dealing more posture damage to enemies. Then I got Charged Return, this is just a free pairing of flame within. Now if you decide to go Rising Flames, which you can, 
Ryan, you want Phoenix and Meteor Impact, although I personally didn't get these two, since you'll need Flame with an active to be using them. So for the sake of talents, I won't pick them, but you're free to. Then I got Cauterized Wounds for free blood loss reduction. Now you'll unbound your Flame Charm for free, as well as get the other talents. And the same thing goes for Frost Draw. And then I got Temp Shot, simply, be <laughs> simply because it makes your Ice Mantras synergize incredibly well with your Fire Mantras. Then I got Crystal Shrapnel, simply because Crystal Procking makes it apply to everything in a radius, which is super broken, as well as Reclaim Glass for the free elemental resistance it provides. Then if you're going Flame Within, get Immolation and Agitating Spark to make you take less damage. And you'll also want Gryosis, just to reduce the ether cost where you can for your Ice Mantras. Now here, I only got two things. I got Scorched Earth and Flashpoint. Although you can get in Power Eruption, I never found myself using the Grand Crit too often. Now coming down here, you want to get Old Habits Die Hard and Breathing Exercises for 10 HP, as well as Armor Conserver and Berserker, that incredibly good defense talent I mentioned earlier. Then get Replenishing Knockout. Ready or not isn't actually as good as you think, since you're pretty much always in danger during the Diluvian. You can get Auto Scream if you like. This is pretty good for the No Mantra rounds, but you don't have to get this if you don't want to. Now Hungry Flames might be one of the best talents in the game, simply because it allows you to cast your flame mantras regardless of ether completely for free. Plus you'll get all the hunger and thirst back immediately due to the effects of Carnivore and Grand Feast. So by all means take this card. Total Shell and Knight's Rally, this is just free damage reduction. Now get Flaming Flourish to turn your uppercuts into eruptions, as well as Emperor Flame for free explosions. And then you can get Explosive Finish if you like, simply for a little bit more damage. Now coming down here I'll add all the extra talents you can get, just so I can show you how good this build can be. Now you can get Pocket Bombs if you like, since it's just a free plus 5 HP, and bombs can proc fire and therefore eruptions. And this closes out the talent section. There's 45 in total, but not all of these are 100% required, and you will probably end up with more talents than this at the end of the build anyways, so it's up to you if you want to get some extra stuff. Now coming over to the mantras, we want to get Burning Servants, which is super good for AoE, Relentless Flames, an insanely high damage dealing mantra. This will be shredding through monsters. Now you can either choose between Rising Flame and Fire Gun. Fire Gun is better for NPCs, while Rising Flame is better for monsters. Personally, I found myself using Fire Gun a little bit more. Now you want to get Warden's Blades for insane damage, as well as Crystal Impale instead of Frozen Servants, since I found this is better for insane single target damage. But you can use Frozen Servants if you like. Now get Ice Cube, so more insane range damage. Now coming over here, we're going to get Flame Assault for free mobility, as well as Flame Wisp for some free healing. Now with your final mantra slot, it's kind of up to you. You can get Frozen Servants for a little bit more DPS around you. You can get Rising Flame if you want an AoE move that can give you a little bit of health back. Or you can choose to get something like Ice Flock if you want to attack a large amount of mobs at once. Personally, I got Frozen Servants, but it's up to what you prefer. Now for your weapon, I got a 3 star damage Grand Sudoraska, as this pairs incredibly well with Frost Draw. Now coming down to the rings, I got a ring of casters as well as a charisma willpower and strength ring and this is the final stats of the build as you can see we are gaining 158 health which is pretty insane and you've also got to take into account this build does insane damage with its mantras i highly recommend this build to new and experienced players alike as it's incredibly strong having used it myself just notice the bell's wrong there we go sacred fields that's exactly what i got anyways now i'm gonna tell you some ways to use it to its fullest potential. Alright, so the first optimization to the build is using a blessed gem on Relentless Flames. This will allow you to spam it out a whole bunch. Granted, you can actually land it, since you want to be using Relentless Flames against monsters as much as possible. If you don't know, Relentless has hyper armor after you land the first hit, and while it's out, you're definitely gonna posture break whatever you're fighting, or end up health packing off a mob. You want to make sure that you're not using it around 
any enemies that can stun or ragdoll you, such as lightning attuned enemies or a thresher that's currently burrowing. Next, while you're using Warden's Blades, next, while you're using Warden's Blades, the second highest damaging mantra on this build, you want to make sure that you're running into enemies. This is to make sure that crystal procs happen as much as possible, and you'll leave a trail of lava behind you for any other monsters that are trying to sneak up on you. Next, you want to try to use Fire Gun against most NPCs. If you've put a Blast Spark on it, then whenever you posture break an enemy, you'll proceed to posture break them a lot faster the next time. And the final optimization if you're looking to push this build to its limits is using Mantra Damage Food to give you an extra 10% more Mantra Damage. This will allow you to take your insanely high damaging Mantras, like Relentless Flames, and make them even better. So if you're truly looking to min-max this build, it's a very good idea to cook up some of this food. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed and have found this build as useful as I do. Make sure to join my Discord if you want to get the build maker link, like, subscribe, check out some more PvE content, and I'll see you all next time.